When Francisco Goya was 72 years old, he started on a four-year project of 14 paintings that have become known as the Dark Paintings. He originally painted these works on the walls of his house and he did not give any titles to them. In fact, he did not intend to show them to other people. They were his deeply personal views on the world between 1819 and 1823. Goya was arguably the most celebrated Spanish artist from the 18th and 19th centuries, working as a highly respected court painter in Madrid, painting beautiful works like Hannibal the Conqueror, Lot and his daughters, The Drinker, The Summer and many more. So how did a successful artist who had the highest possible rank as a court painter end up painting these dark works like Saturn devouring his son? and Witches' Sabbath. When Goya was 46 years old, he suffered from a serious and undiagnosed disease which left him deaf. As a result of this episode, he withdrew himself more and more from society and his artistic outlook became very introspective. He would not be so interested in light themes like boys climbing a tree, and the brighter colors like in his portrait of King Charles IV of Spain were replaced by a darker palette and themes like this courtyard with lunatics from 1794 and Witches' Sabbath and Witches' Flight both from 1797. And the state of society did not do much to brighten them up either. France had declared war on Spain which would last for over a decade. That period all culminated in his two famous works referring to devastating events that occurred on May 2nd and 3rd of the year 1808, when riots and executions took place in Madrid, which he would later capture on the canvas. And that the war had a huge impact on Goya and the rest of society is also evidenced by a series of 82 prints Goya created between 1810 and 1820. He gave this series the title Fatal Consequences of Spain's Bloody War with Bonaparte and Other Emphatic Caprices. And they contain his view on the atrocities of war and the resulting famine. So that brings us back to the series of dark paintings. The once celebrated Goya had retreated to a farmhouse outside Madrid. The house was and is known as La Quinta del Sordo, which means the house of the deaf man. And while Goya was near deaf, it was actually known by that name because of the nearest farmhouse that also belonged to a deaf man. Goya lived there together with his mate and her daughter, as Goya's wife had died a few years earlier. He suffered from issues with his physical health, his old age and several severe anxieties and he preferred to spend most of his time in isolation. But he was still an artist at heart. So with his dark outlook on life, he decided to paint directly on the walls of his dining and sitting rooms. Nowadays all these works are in the Prado Museum in Madrid. And if you wonder how it is possible that these wall paintings are now in a museum, after the death of Goya, they were carefully removed from the wall and transferred to canvas, such that they could be preserved for eternity. And while you have already seen several of his dark paintings in this video, let's have a closer look at them to get a peek into Goya's state of mind at the time he painted them. And keep in mind, the titles that I will use to refer to them were only given after his death and not by Goya himself. And on top of that, the interpretations given to them are only made by others, as there are no documented comments from Goya himself on these works. This is man mocked by two women, showing the women making fun of the man on the right who appears to be masturbating. Man reading shows a group of six men around some printed document. They are probably politicians who are reading a newspaper article about themselves. Both works are thought to be a comment on the futility of the actions of different people in society. Known as Atropos or the Fates, 
This painting shows the goddesses of destiny. They are deciding on the fate of the captive man on the left whose hands are bound. And the man has no way to influence their decision. As you notice, my descriptions are kind of brief because for many of these works it is hard to really understand what Goya's intention was. For example, Fantastical Vision shows Napoleonic soldiers on the ground combined with two people suspended in mid-air, clearly bothered by the situation. And The Dog shows a lonely, lost and afraid animal in a vast landscape. Fight with Cudgels shows a vision of two commoners fighting each other, all the results of his experience in a turbulent world. One of the two most famous black paintings is Witch's Sabbath, a work that deals with the themes of intimidation, violence, aging and death. It shows Satan in the shape of a goat in front of a group of witches, it probably is a satirical work about the superstitious beliefs in society and specifically the trials of the Spanish Inquisition. The other famous painting of this series is Saturn devouring his son, referring to the mythological story that Saturn had received a prophecy that one of his kids would overthrow him. He decided to eat each of his children directly after birth. It is perhaps the most debated work in this series and I am curious to hear in the comment section down below how you interpret this work. And then there are the remaining works like The Two Old Men, which may be a more personal painting referring to Goya's anxieties and deafness. There is also this work of two old ones eating soup. Two satirical works related to a pilgrimage of people from all walks of life to the shrine of Saint Isidro, a Spanish farm worker who deeply cared about poor people and animals. Judith and Holofernes refers to the biblical story of the Israelite Judith who decapitated the enemy's king Holofernes. It may have been a reference to the king of Spain at the moment he painted it, and yes, Goya did not like him. The seductress shows the mate of Goya who lived with him. She was some 35 years younger and it is suggested that she did have some intimate relationship with Goya. But this painting is mostly expressing the idea of melancholia. Well I hope you didn't fall asleep by this quick summary of all his dark paintings. For many of them I could actually record a separate video to analyze them in more detail and discuss all the alternative interpretations of the work. As you could see these works are pretty dark in appearance, but back in the day when Goya painted them they would have been a little bit brighter. But the discoloration over time has made them just that little bit darker such that it is sometimes hard to see the details in each work. And one last thing. Goya almost certainly did not intend these paintings to become public, but yet they are on display in Spain's most popular museum, and I am making a video about it. It feels a bit strange to do so, but at the same time they are from the hand of one of the greatest artists from history and help to understand the times in which he painted them and his internal struggles and dark visions. This may not have been the most cheerful video, but I hope you enjoyed this discussion of the dark paintings by Goya. If you did, please hit that thumbs up button and subscribe to be alerted when new videos are released. Thanks for watching.